came home from work one day, the car was gone, my clothes was gone, my shoes was gone. So I'm like, Cassius, you know what's going on? Where's my stuff? The only thing he told me was, we done with, I took it, that's it. I loved her, and she went behind my back with my brother. So I have the right to get what belonged to me. We're both very big personalities, and we got in yeah. a heated argument. Something in him just snapped. He pushed me. I fall on my bed and hit the window, and glass shards fly all over me. Plaintiff Lanissa Williams claims her ex bought her a car and clothes, and then stole it all when they broke up. She's suing for $3,800. Defendant Cassius Shine claims his ex cheated on him with his own brother. He says he owes her nothing. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. The witness can have a seat. The Honorable Judge Jerry Springer now presiding. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Najee. This is case number 125 on the docket, Williams versus Shine. I see here we have the plaintiff, Lanissa Williams, and you are suing your ex-boyfriend, Cassius Shine, for $3,800 for stealing her car and clothing. So okay. why don't we start yes. with you, Lanissa? What is your case? Yes, sir. Well, we've been together. We was together for six years. Um, okay. During those six years, he gave me a gift. He purchased this jag for me. Um, I gave him half on the jag. We put the jag in his name because I didn't have my license, but it was given to me as a gift. That was my car, that, that, that car. I went to school, went to work, did everything in that car. The car was given to me as a gift. But you put in half the money. Yes, sir, I did. So it was half a gift. <laughs> but we got it notarized, you know, stating that this is a gift I'm, per I'm giving to Lanissa. During that time, I came home from work one day, the car was gone, my clothes was gone, my shoes was gone. So I'm like, Cassius, you know what's going on? Where's my car, where's all this stuff, where's my stuff? He didn't give me no answer, I don't think he was just, well, he didn't give me the direct answer. The only thing he told me was, we, bitch, we done with, excuse my French, bitch, we done with. I took it, don't call me no more, that's it. What do you say about that, Cassius? You're damn right, I took my car, and I took my clothes, and I took the shoes <laughs> that I gave Miss Williams, due to the fact, Your Honor, that we had agreement, the agreement was, Your Honor, that I would not pay half and she would not pay half, and the agreement was that she would not be faithful through our relationship, <laughs> and she was not faithful. She went behind my back. She dated my brother. I object, Your Honor. She dated your brother. I seen my brother at the gas station. I confronted my brother about it. People been telling me about it. So my brother did not deny. He said, yes, he was dating her and messing around with her behind my back. The car is in my name. The title is in my name. First of all, I'm not sure that this has anything to do with the agreement on the car. But let's put that aside for At a all. moment. You're saying you found out that she was cheating on you with your brother. And is your, your brother yes, is here, right? Yes, that's, yes my wit saying, that's my witness, sir. If he could just step up for a moment. He, he's hard of hearing in one ear, so you have to... This is, this is my witness, oh, okay. with his brother. Well, he's saying that you had something going on, that you slept with his brother. From, I say, like two, three months in our relationship, he was being very possessive, always accusing me of messing around with anybody. So he had started this way before he even thought, of, or before his crazy-ass brain thought that I was messing with his brother, which is not true. Walter, your brother is saying that he saw you at the gas station, that he confronted you about that, and you admitted to him that there was something going on with you and uh, Lanissa. Your Honor, there is no truth to that statement that was made, you know, by him. I had heard that he had made a statement from other friends, but that is not true. The problem with my brother Cassius is, I was knowing Lanissa Williams before he even got with her. We have been friends for 26 years. The situation is, my brother is a very selfish individual because he has money and he can afford things that other people can't afford. He presented me that he was gonna give her something for their anniversary, which 
I went to the car lot with him, and she had half of the money. He presented the other half, and the car was bought for seven thousand dollars in front of me, with the car being notarized. I told her to make, make sure she, she get, get everything right. did the right way because I know my brother. I feel like this whole thing's a setup. Uh, just because I got money, you know, they set me up, you know, all along they've been messing around, they've been dating each other. He he wow. just admitted that he been knowing her way before me, Your Honor. Now you also sued because you said he took your clothing and yes, shoes, he took your shoes? Yes, and that I do not know why, because that's just the type of person he is. I didn't have your any, Honor. Okay, I, Cassius, Your Honor, I didn't have nothing you, to I wear. Object, I object to what she's okay. saying, Your Honor. Because I pay for everything, Your Honor. She ain't pay for nothing. First of all, do you wear heels? No, sir. Thank no. you. Thank Why are you, you taking her you. shoes? Let's say you're, to you're telling the total truth. You paid for those shoes. You paid for her clothing. Got it. But when you're in a relationship with someone, it is absolutely normal that for this woman that you profess to love at the time, that you buy her things. When a relationship breaks up, you don't both sit down and take out a piece of paper and write down everything that you paid for, everything that she paid for, who bought the groceries that day, who paid for the meal at the restaurant that day. You don't do that. You bought her clothing. That's what a guy does for a woman, and a woman does the same for a guy. That's not a big deal. You can't then... Uh, the clothing was obviously hers. She was wearing it. Once you bought it for her, that's her clothing. It's not yours. You wouldn't look good in it. You're a good-looking guy, Cassius, but you in heels, I don't see it. Here's the whole entire situation as to Lanissa and Cassius, my brother. Some years ago, Lanissa lost her kids, two of her kids, to a house fire. When he come along some months later and decided to help, he did it, you know, to help her buy this car, and I told him, yes. I talked to my brother to Cassius and explained to him, you shouldn't do what you're doing because me, me and Lenissa have nothing going. I was friends with her way before y'all two got together. You understand what I'm saying? And she's going through a lot mentally by losing her kids. And then you do this to her, you're giving her something, and you acting like she owes you something. She owes him nothing. She's and been a real good friend of mine for years, uh, Your Honor, and she's a very nice person. And Cassius had no right to do that, especially some months after her kids died in a house fire. That car, that was with him, with this going through, us going through it with his car, that was my car. That was my car, that was my gift. He know that I was going back and forth to school. He know I was going back and forth to work. I didn't know anything about that with your children and yeah, obviously I, that I is horrific. You know, yes. And yes, that, yes. that's horrible. Thank you. In this case, which is what is before me. Your Honor, uh, I just feel used. The, the whole relationship, I just feel used in the relationship. Uh, they conspired against me, you know, they're in the court conspiring against me, <laughs> you know. Um, she walked out the door with booty shorts on, attracted the men's, you know, your, your honor. That don't have, have ha nothing to do with, that don't have nothing to do with none of that. See, that's what I'm talking about. Vanessa should have handled this more professional, what she did. You're right, I did take, take back everything, you know, that I had because I was in love with Vanessa. I loved her, and she went behind my back with my brother. So I have the right to get what belonged to me that I paid for. Is your relationship with your brother repairable? Let him tell no. it, no. It's, it, it's not repel, repairable, Your Honor. Anytime my brother go behind my back and, and do the things that he did to me, you know, how, how can you say you my brother? You know, you're not my brother. Carrying you know, on if you do that to me, Your Honor, you know, if you love your brother, you wouldn't have never did that for no woman, Your Honor. That, that's a woman. I'm your blood brother. You say that there was something going on with those two. I mean, they've certainly been friends a long time. That doesn't necessarily mean, that doesn't mean that they had an intimate relationship. But anyway, that aside, what I have here, which you signed to, is a copy of this note where you say, and I'm quoting, I, Cassius Shine, am giving Lanissa Williams $3,500 as a gift to purchase a car for $7,000 cash from a private car owner. Nowhere in this note, and she's putting in the other $3,500.
Is there anything about it is conditional upon her being faithful to you or whatever? Here's what I see. It may have been intended as a gift, but the reality is you both chipped in $3,500 to purchase yes, sir. with cash this car, which you both had advantage of that car for six years. Now, for whatever the reason and whatever the cause, the relationship has been split up. You took the car, which is, in fact, in your name. Legally, the car is, is yours. But she put up half the value of the car, which you both used. So I would suggest that just on the car part of the lawsuit, she's entitled to half of the value of the car back. Now, you sued because you put in $3,500 on the car, Vanessa. Yes, sir. But the car yes, today sir. isn't worth $7,000. The blue book value of the car, even if it is, and I'm going to say it's in good condition, yes. the blue book yes, value is $2,255. Well, I round that off to the half of that value would be $1,125. So your equity in that car, which you helped purchase, you paid for 50% of it, would today be $1,125. You did write here and sign on this document that you were, in fact, giving her a gift. Well, apparently it wasn't a gift if you're then, because you broke up with her, suddenly taking the car with you. But she's not suing here to get the car back. She is suing for the half of the equity she put into that car she wants back, which she is entitled to. And for the clothing and shoes and stuff, you bought it for her. It's her clothing. You don't get to take her clothing just because the relationship breaks up. I know you paid for it. You were a good guy. You paid for it. And I'll leave it at that. But it's her clothing. What are you doing putting it in the car and running off with it? She is entitled to $1,125 on the worth of the car. She's entitled to $300 for the clothing, which would come to $1,425. So I find for the plaintiff in the sum of $1,425. Just a jealous hearted person, I mean, that, that show, it, go, it shows it. He, that's all his main focus was, that I'm messing around. And yes, I took it, I ain't giving him, I don't want to give her nothing back. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm getting over the situation, you know, uh, I feel a lot better now. And uh, I wish both of them the best. I just try to uh, get me and my brother back as, as real brothers together. And he don't know how to set things aside because he's a uh, very selfish person. But the court made their decision, and that's what it is. Plaintiff Max Schmidt is suing his former friend and roommate for $5,000 for assault, and a broken window. Defendant Zach Shalou claims the plaintiff isn't telling the truth. He says he owes right nothing. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I, I do. do. Thank you. Good morning, Judge. Morning, Najee. This is case number 106 on the docket, Schmidt versus Shalou. Thank you. You're welcome, Judge. And welcome to both of you. I see we have here the plaintiff, Max Schmidt, and you are suing your former friend, Zach Shalou, for $5,000 for assault and a broken window. Go ahead, Max. What is your case? It started freshman year of college. And I met Zach, and we hit it off right at the bat. And one night, I thought about this idea of a mockumentary comedy. Everyone in our group loved it, especially Zach. And from there, we said, you know what? We're film majors. We can do this. We can make this possible. So we went to New Orleans during Mardi Gras and filmed the pilot. So we got the, the show done. So Zach has his connections, and he goes to all these people and kind of shops the idea around. And during that time, we also moved in with each other and a couple other guys in a house. And I hear him in his room on the phone. He's talking about the idea. And I hear him submitting the idea to the WGA solely under his name. 
I confronted him about it. And something in him just snapped. He pushed me. And we started in the living room, and he pushed me into my, my bedroom. I, I look at my roommates, and I'm just confused. And he pushes me. I fall on my bed and hit the window, and glass shards fly everywhere, all over my comforter, all over me. OK, so I understand your case. Your case is that he, yeah. over this dispute, he assaulted you, and the window is damaged, and you want him to pay for that and for the assault. OK, let me hear from you, Zach. Uh, yes, Your Honor, thank you. If you go to exhibit D, you can see that I legally came up with the idea. Is this what suddenly brought about the fight? Because this is about the broken window. We got in these, we're both very big personalities, and we got in yeah. a heated argument. By the way, other people being there, that's a complete lie. That is a lie. It was oh. just him and it was just I. We have roommates, but it was just us in the room at the time. How did the fight start? What, what happened? Describe it to me. There was this huge mess in his room. He doesn't clean. That's another roommate problem, oh. but it's irrelevant. Um, okay. Other, other than the fact that his room being messy, he tripped over a shoe right into the head of his window, and he cracked it. Yes, it was during an argument that he started in his room, and it was him that fell in the first place. You're suing for $5,000. What happened that brings it to a $5,000 lawsuit? You got in an argument, just like brothers, they fight. $5,000, and you're both still walking around? Who owns this house? You is this, uh, where did I re uh, see in the complaint? Is it your dad's home and you're renting it? It's my, my dad's home and we're renting it from him. He's the landlord. Get together and give your dad the money to fix the window. I mean, you're both grown ups. I don't know, Judge. What are you doing coming to court fighting $5,000 for a tussle? But he assaulted me. You know, I know what a tussle is, and that wasn't a tussle. And I, his intentions were to hurt me, it was assault. Okay. I think you two are going to wind up later on in life being friends, and maybe not too far in the distant future. This is one tussle you had. You're upset that he sued you, and, and you're upset because he pushed you, whatever. I'm finding it's not a $5,000 lawsuit. I'll tell you what. You started the fight. You pushed him. I'm going to give you $200, and you're going to go home. I'm willing to repair our friendship if he repairs that window. I'm upset that I have to pay anything at all, but you know, at the end of the day, it could have been a lot worse. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. For more Judge Jerry, click here. For more Jerry Springer, click here.